Okay, so Montreal Canadiens Prospects Development Camp concluded a little while ago. All these guys are back in their homes, they are no longer in Montreal doing the thing, and because a lot of these prospects are now home, we have some insider information that we have from people that are in those locations giving us updates as to what the Habs prospects are up to. Now, there are likely many prospects with many updates, but the one we are focusing on in today's video is none other than the first overall pick by the Montreal Canadiens himself. It is Yuri Slavkovsky and a few updates that we had had from Tomas Prokop, who is a Slovak hockey insider and basketball journalist. Prokop attended one of Slavkovsky's practices in Slovakia and got a few quotes from the guy talking about the jersey number situation in Montreal, his overall goal heading into 2022-2023, and other things we can expect from the big Slovak winger. Now, included in this little thread on Twitter, by the way, the link will be in the description if you want to go ahead and check this out, are some video clips and images of Slavkovsky doing his training in Slovakia, so it's pretty interesting to see how everything is going. There is a video of his practice, there's actually two, I believe, of him going in there trying to dangle a goalie, so it's pretty interesting to see Slavkovsky in his own natural element over there. But there are some other quotes here that I thought were interesting to go over when it comes to the big Slovak winger. Here's what he said about the number 20. I'm so thankful to Chris Weidman. We made a deal that I will give his son a signed jersey, and I'll definitely invite Chris to dinner, too. This means that heading into 2022-2023, that big number 20 that was on the back of Chris Weidman's jersey for all of last season will now be given over to Slavkovsky. It's actually pretty interesting when you acknowledge how some players on the Canadians the past few years have given their numbers up. The big one that stands out to me is Ilya Kovalchuk heading over to Montreal and taking... What the heck was it, the 17? Because Brett Kulak gave it away to him and he got a watch in return, something like that. Ilya Kovalchuk, legendary NHL player coming over to Montreal and taking over that number. And Slavkovsky, hopefully a future NHL legend himself, also coming over to Montreal and you have another defenseman giving up their number to give way for the new guy. It's good that Weidman's son is going to get a signed jersey and that Chris is going to get a dinner, but this is not the only quote we have from Slavkovsky in this little thread. His main goal is to play in the NHL right away from the start of October. He needs six to eight weeks of summer practice. For this reason, he will skip the World Junior Championships in Edmonton. He'll arrive to Montreal in the middle of August. Now, this is a really interesting kind of assessment that I feel... Some Canadians fans might get a little bit pissy about, like I know it's always a fun time to go out there and see your prospects suit up for the World Juniors, and for the most part that's been a practice that we've been accustomed to seeing out of these NHL guys, but it's mostly been an event for guys that are not at the NHL level. When the World Juniors happens at its regular time, so December, January-ish, we normally see these teams end up losing out on a few players here and there. If Jack Hughes is doing his thing with the New Jersey Jersey Devils, then the Devils are going to say, okay, no, screw that. I know he's eligible to play for the World Juniors, but we're going to keep him. He makes our team better, so we're going to play with him. The only other situation where this actually doesn't apply was a few years ago when Kirby Doc ended up going to the World Juniors because the NHL season didn't start until after January. He actually got injured in that World Juniors and he missed out on a chunk of the year, which was very unfortunate. But with the World Juniors for 2020 two being postponed until August, it makes things a little bit more interesting for a lot of these players that are looking to make their teams right out of training camp that are looking to make some damage in the August-September-ish time frame for their NHL clubs. I have no doubt that Yuri Slavkovsky is not going to be the only player that is eligible to play at the World Juniors to miss out on the entire event, but for a lot of Canadians fans that were looking to cheer on some of the other Slovak players too, like Simon Nemec and anybody else, Filip Meshar, of course, he's a Canadians guy as well, you might be losing out on Slavkovsky, which is unfortunate, but if it's a decision that he's making for the purpose of helping him make the NHL team by the time September rolls around, it's something that I can honestly live with and... Let's say he goes out there and he absolutely dominates in the preseason. It's going to be because he had that extra training. Here is what Slavkovsky is focusing on in the summer. He's working on his skill set and his speed. He needs to get more strength in his chest muscles. Now, I'm going to be honest, I don't really know too much about 
calisthenics and kinesthetics and all the other aesthetics, the other words that make for athletic people being athletic. I don't really know why working on your chest is something that would improve your speed, but maybe he's just talking about this in a few separate thoughts. Either way, though, Slavkovsky has a training plan that it's apparent he's going to follow, so it's going to be cool seeing him hopefully come over to Montreal in August and be bigger, be faster, be stronger than what we had already seen at the development camp. You know, the clunky Pierre Engvall thing? Yeah, that's kind of funny, but either way... This is also what he said when it comes to who he talks to from the Canadiens roster so far. Obviously, Chris Weidman is in there because he had to talk to the guy to get his number changed, but Nick Suzuki, Cole Caulfield, and Joel Edmondson are all players that he talks to as well. Now, the first two, Suzuki and Caulfield, make sense. You have yourselves the Slavkovsky line that is pretty much going to take over the reins of the Canadians' future. And yes, I said the Slavkovsky line because the Slav comes from Slavkovsky, the Kof in the middle is Caulfield, and then the Zuki line from the end is like, you know, Suzuki. It's kind of funny because their names kind of coagulate to make a line name that sounds like Slavkovsky's name himself. But Joel Edmondson is a really interesting one. Now, I can't really find the link here. Why in the heck is Yuri Slavkovsky talking to Edmondson, of all people? But if anybody wants to go out there and tell me in the comments, hey, Lego, they had an event where they did this or whatever, this is why Slavkovsky is in contact with him. Hey, the floor is yours. Go out there and tell me in the comments why that is the case, because I can't seem to find the link right now. But either way, Yuri Slavkovsky gave us some updates about his practice regime, the number that he'll wear, and what exactly it is his plans are for the next few months here, heading into the World Juniors, that in which he will not take part in, as well as what his communication has been like for the rest of the Canadians. It's going to be cool to see Suzuki, Caulfield, and Slavkovsky do their thing, because... I mean, look, even in his pre-draft interview, we had all this talk about Slavkovsky and whether or not he could play with Suzuki and Caulfield as a left-wing guy and compliment two guys that are a lot smaller than he is with his size, his physicality, and his skill. So now that he's gotten drafted and now that he's communicating with them, I think it's a good friendship bonding formation type of thing that's going on here with the Canadians. You love to see this stuff, right, don't you? Also included in the little thread here, from Tomasz Prokop. Firstly, it's a video of Slavkovsky coming in on a goalie. He comes in and he snipes it far side before receiving another puck coming back down the same wing and then pulling it over to the little Datsuk toe drag. He misses on that opportunity, but it's pretty cool to see him go out there and try it. And then there is another video of him also doing a similar move. Slavkovsky does a little dance around the cones and then comes right in, drags it, shoots it. It looks like he misses the net there. He picks up another puck and then comes right in and shoots it one more time. But either way, you know, this is Slavkovsky doing the Slovak practices, going out there and training his body. Hopefully he's got a good gym regime as well. So we'll see how he improves his physique, his mobility, and his speed heading into Canadians training camp in the September period, I guess. But talk to me in the comments about your thoughts about Yuri Slavkovsky and all all these updates that we have had from Slovakia. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishaj Rolls 99. And bye.